contracts uh, to ensure that the recommendations that have been set by the AIB are being implemented swiftly. Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Fergus Ewing on the future of the Scottish steel industry. The Minister will take questions at the end of his statement and there should therefore be no interventions or interruptions. Can I just take this opportunity to say to all members who are in the Chamber, we are very, very tight for time this afternoon and I may well have to drop some people um, from asking a question because we're simply not going to have the time. So if you wish your colleagues to get a question, can you keep your own question as brief as possible? I now call on Fergus Ewing. Minister, you have 10 minutes. Officer, I welcome this opportunity to address the Chamber, albeit to talk about the extremely disappointing news from steel firm Tata that it intends to mothball its two production plants in Scotland. 270 workers could be directly affected if these plans go ahead, 225 at the DL Plate Rolling Works and a further 45 at the Clyde Bridge plant. Our thoughts are with them and their families as they go through this period of huge uncertainty. We also express our solidarity with the 900 employees at Tata's facility in Scunthorpe who are facing a similar fate. However, let me be clear from the outset, we will leave no stone unturned in our efforts to save the steel industry in Scotland. Our top priority is to secure an alternative operator to continue with commercial production. We are aware that this task is not an easy one and that there are significant challenges facing the continued production of steel in Scotland. But we are, as a government, determined to use all our resources, devote all our individual time and attention as ministers as required, and do absolutely everything that we can to prevent the loss of steelmaking in Scotland. This Chamber, presiding officer, is well aware of the long and proud heritage of steelwork in Scotland. The DL plant in Motherwell has been involved in the iron and steel industry since 1872, and the Clybridge Steelworks in Cambus Lang first opened in 1887. Between them, their products have been used across the world in construction, mining, and energy exploration sectors. Their steel plates were formed into many of the most famous ships built on the River Clyde and around the world. Even the reputation for quality earned by DL and Clyde Bridge could not help them battle the serious problems faced by the steel industry in recent years. The price of steel has fallen significantly as worldwide production has almost doubled since 2000. Cheap subsidized steel is widely available in Western markets. High energy costs, particularly affecting energy intensive industries and a strong pound has hit export opportunities. Tata's operations in Scotland and the rest of the UK have suffered greatly against this difficult trading background, as have other steel companies in the UK. Just last week, administrators were appointed to parts of Caparo Steel with 1,700 jobs at risk. And last month, when SSI mothballed its red car steel operations, the Westminster Government called for a UK steel summit. The Scottish Government was represented at the UK summit and yesterday, in discussions with Anna Subri, the Minister for Small Business, Industry and Enterprise, we confirmed that we will cooperate with the UK Government and contribute fully to this work. I wrote to Anna Subri on 20th of October and asked that the Prime Minister continue to urge the Chinese Premier to take voluntary action to reduce capacity in the Chinese steel sector and reduce the volume of exports. I urge the UK Government to help with energy costs for the steel sector by bringing forward the implementation of all the provisions of the Energy Intensive Industries Compensation Package from April 2016 to October 2015. I also asked for the UK Government to put as much pressure as possible on the EU to complete as quickly as possible an investigation into Chinese steel imports into Europe and whether it constitutes illegal dumping. When I spoke to Anna Subri yesterday, I stressed these concerns and assured her that we, we shall contribute fully to any negotiations. And I welcome the UK Government's confirmation that they will cooperate fully in relation to state aid clearance of any deal that may emerge. 
However, it is disappointing that the UK government did not agree to allow Scottish ministers to participate in crucial EU discussions, which may affect Scotland's interests in the preservation of a key industry. But, presiding officer, I will not dwell on that today. Following Tata's announcement on 20th of October that the Clybridge and DL were to be mothballed, we moved immediately to establish a task force with the aim of retaining functioning steel yards, employing as many of the staff as possible. The First Minister visited both sites last Thursday and met Tata Steel Management, trades unions and the workforce to highlight our full commitment to this issue and to emphasise the primary aim of the task force, namely to seek the continuation of steelmaking at Clybridge and DL. The First Minister specifically asked for Tata Steel's commitment to maintaining the staff at both sites throughout the consultation period. It is hugely important to keep the work of the plants going as we seek alternative operators. Scottish Enterprise has already been working with Tata Steel to assist the Scottish sites, including commissioning an energy review to identify savings and options for energy generation on site, including tailored training packages and SMAS support with an efficiency review. That's the Manufacturing Advisory Service. I'm chairing the Scottish Steel Task Force, which includes representatives from both Lanarkshire Council, trades unions, the Scottish Government and its agencies, uh, members of this chamber and the Westminster Government, and will coordinate the development of a joint multi-agency economic recovery plan to mitigate the economic impacts to the area resulting from Tata Steel's announcement. The task force will first meet on Thursday this week and already have Tata Steel's commitment to playing a full part in the task force process and to working closely with us throughout the consultation period. We are very grateful for that cooperation. The task force will also consider wider support for the workforce at this difficult time, including ensuring that the modern apprentices employed on site do not have their education affected. To that end, I'm happy to confirm that as an early step, the Scottish Government will guarantee that the uh, modern apprentices employed here will be able to continue with the off-the-job training required to complete their apprenticeship should there be a gap in their employment. In Lanarkshire, we have a highly skilled workforce. It is essential that these skills are not lost, but put to productive use. Our primary focus remains on seeking an alternative owner for these plants, which we recognise will not be easy. Whilst I don't think it is helpful to speculate on which individual commercial organisations may be interested, I can assure you, presiding officer, that we will work with all parties who could help with future investment in the plants. I am sure the Chamber will recognise that any discussions in relation to potential alternative operators must be conducted in commercially confidential terms. The Scottish Government and Scottish Enterprise, with support from Tata, are developing an information prospectus which will allow our Scottish Development International offices worldwide to generate interest in the opportunity presented by this situation in Scotland. I firmly believe that there can be a viable future for a steel industry in Scotland. And, presiding officer, I can assure you that this government will do everything in its power to seek a secure and sustainable future for the Tata sites in Scotland. The government will, of course, keep the chamber informed of further developments as they arise. For now, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. The Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we have to move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question were to press the request speak button now. And I call James Kelly. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank the Minister for advance uh, sight of his statement. There is no doubt that the mothballing of the plants at DL and Clydebridge is a very serious situation particularly for the workers and their families, and our thoughts are with them at this time. And we must ensure that everything is done, everything, to ensure that those plants and those jobs uh, remain in place. Steel is uh, an iconic part of the Lanarkshire economy and the Scottish economy, and it would be unacceptable and unimaginable if steel production were to cease 
at these plants, particularly as the Scottish Government rightly makes uh, infrastructure one of the main platforms of its economic policy, and part of that is the production of steel. Scottish Labour supports the setting up of the task force, but we must ensure that it is not a talking shop. We need hard action. And from that point of view, can I ask the Minister two specific questions? What financial assistance will the Scottish Government provide to ensure that the physical assets at the plant remain in place where, where the, the search for an alternative buyer is found? And also, what uh, financial assistance will be provided in terms of retaining the skills of the workforce? Can I also ask what work the Scottish Government has done in identifying the steel requirements in current and future public contracts in order that the L and Clyde Bridge can bid and be successful in uh, retaining the work for these projects so that we can build a sustainable steel operation at these plants going forward. Minister. Hey, well, can I thank uh, Mr Kelly for the constructive approach and welcome him and colleagues to uh, colleagues who are represented locally to take part in the work of the task force which uh, has its first meeting on Thursday of this week. To answer his, his questions, um, our primary objective, presiding officer, is to seek an alternative operator from the site. That is the primary task and, of course, in the work which the task force will carry out, we shall consider extremely carefully whatever financial assistance that is practicable and legally capable of being extended in order to secure that objective. And we will apply that approach throughout our work in energy costs and business rates and in all other areas. Uh, secondly, I entirely agree that these, the workforce is a highly skilled workforce. We will do exactly what uh, was been done in Wales to where the REACT provided assistance for uh, workers there, and we will ensure that the PACE support is fully extended. Uh, but our primary objective is to continue steel production in Scotland, not make provision for what happens after it is closed. Of course, uh, we, we shall also, uh, in the task force, consider very carefully the needs of the workforce, uh, and that will be done. Finally, public contracts, of course, we are working extremely closely uh, with all public procurement bodies in relation to what future projects could benefit from a Scottish steel supplier. Transport Scotland are already reviewing what future projects fall into that category, uh, and I'm very happy to work very closely with Mr Kelly as regards the detail of that as the work of the task force progresses. Martin Fraser. Uh, thank you. Can I thank uh, the Minister for his statement and for uh, advance sight of it. It is a matter of greatest concern that steel making, not just in Scotland but across the UK, is under such serious threat. We welcome the cooperation that there has been between UK and Scottish governments and the establishment of the Scottish task force that the Minister referred to. Unite the Union has identified five key issues that need to be addressed to help the industry. Help with high energy prices, action on unfair imports, reform of business rates, fair implementation of regulations and the supporting of local content in major construction projects. Now, I appreciate that in relation to some of these, the Minister's hands are tied. But business rates have been fully devolved since 1999, and he could act here if he wished. So can the Minister tell me, what is the annual rates bill paid by the plants at Clydebridge and DL? And secondly, what action will the Scottish Government now take on business rates, given that this has been identified as a key issue and is an area entirely under their control? Minister. Uh, well, again, I, I welcome the general constructive approach <coughs> that we are hearing this afternoon from across the Chamber. I think that's a very important and welcome message to send to everybody affected, that we are working hard to do everything we can. And, of course, I welcome the reference to the trades unions with whom we are in extremely regular contact. And I share the, the analysis of the particular challenges, the five topics that are facing. And, and I had a workmanlike discussion with Anna Subri yesterday afternoon where uh, I think we were broadly coming at it from a shared desire. And I mentioned our particular appreciation that the UK government have already pledged 
to assist in state aid clearance of any offer that may emerge. And that's a very valuable uh, effort that would be necessary in that event. To answer a specific question from the top of my head, presiding officer, the business rates for the two plants combined are £823,000, according to my own arithmetic carried out earlier this morning. The two plants uh, had uh, appeals against the rateable values at the last revaluation. Both appeals were successful. However, that is matters as they stand at the moment. Um, we have, of course, obtained advice in relation to this matter, and we are looking at all possible ways by which assistance can be provided. We are constrained, however, I think it is only correct to say, by the state aid rules, where there is a, a maximum amount of assistance that can be provided to any steel company over a period of three years, and it is a relatively small amount of money. But there are practical measures which may be applicable depending upon what future operator wishes and uh, requirements may be as regards space by subdivision. Uh, there are a number of other possibilities that we are looking at. And of course, I'm happy to share the details with Mr. Fraser and all other members of this chamber as that work progresses. Claire Adamson, followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Minister for his statement and welcome the Scottish Government's immediate swift approach in establishing the local task force. Um, but does the Minister share my concern that um, this is in stark contrast with the UK Government's response to the steel industry over the, who have largely ignored the warnings over the last few years and have yet to act on some of the areas that have been detailed by Community Union, especially in the area of, of fuel and the, the energy costs for the company. And does he also share my disappointment that the Scottish Ministers will not be included in the European talks? And what, what guarantee can he, sh can he give us that the case for the high quality, highly skilled workforce in both Yale and Clyde Bridge will be heard in Europe? Minister. Uh, well, of course, I fully understand that, especially amongst the workforce and their families, there will be considerable anger and frustration at uh, the events that have happened. Uh, forgive me, Presiding Officer, if I look forward, not back, and focus on what we might do rather than what might have been. Uh, I do, for example, think it important to place on record our appreciation for the full support of Tata in the work that we are doing. Without that full support, I suspect things would be even more challenging than they are. And I think it's also fair to reflect, and Mr Pentland will know this, that actually Tata did make very substantial investment, both in DL in 2010 of £8 million in a new uh, a plating operation of £8 million and of the same amount in Clybridge the following year. And I think it's important to put that on the record, simply as a matter of fact to record the fact that we are working with Tata here to seek a solution in what is an extremely challenging situation. I did have a chat with uh, Anna Subri yesterday, as I explained. I did seek representation of the Scottish Government, and I did so because... We have an interest here in preserving our steel industry, and I felt that we had a constructive role to play, as we always seek to do in relation to these negotiations and discussions, uh, and I have had some involvement in the past in some of these matters in other areas. Uh, that was rejected, but as I said earlier, I'm not going to dwell on that today, presiding officer. Rather, what I hope will emerge today is a unity across all parties in this chamber that we do our very best through the hard work of uh, our agencies through our leadership, we leave no stone unturned, as the Prime Minister has pledged, in securing the future, the continued future of the steel industry in Scotland. Will it any followed by John Pentland? Uh, can I thank the Minister for an advanced sight of uh, his statement and also welcome the constructive tone across the Chamber, by and large across the Chamber uh, this afternoon. Um, I understand that the the two plants may be attractive to new buyers because some of the markets have not been fully exploited by Tata in the past, particularly in flood, flood prevent, prevention, port infrastructure, but also the defence markets. Um, has the government considered a capital investment in these plants, if it's permitted, to allow the company to enter these new markets or a new buyer into these new markets, and also potential wage support in order to extend the 45-day consultation period so we do not lose the workforce from these important two plants. Minister. I'm, I'm grateful again for the approach that we're hearing this afternoon from all parties. And uh, I do think Mr Rennie, you know, for the first time, has raised two 
uh, very relevant and apposite uh, issues. Of course, we are fully considering what opportunities there would be for the Scottish side of Tata, namely the Ellen Clybridge, uh, and uh, they offer particular expertise and facilities. Their plate mill can, I, I understand, although I'm no expert, carry out work that no other plate mill can carry out. It can make the thickest steel plates, uh, for example, uh, of dimensions that cannot be replicated in other plants, so I'm told by experts. And therefore, there may be opportunities for the Scottish operations to carry out niche specialist work uh, and to do so at a more profitable level than perhaps has been possible in the past for various reasons. Uh, so the answer to his first question is yes, of course, we are looking fully at these matters as he would expect and taking expert advice on all of these things. Uh, secondly, regarding the consultation period, this is now 45 days, that expires around the 7th or the 8th of December or thereabouts from memory, presiding officer, just before Christmas. Of course, we are in a regular daily contact with Tata and we will be discussing with them the uh, procedure mechanism involved. But it is important that we have sufficient time uh, in order for the work that any potential alternative operator may need to carry out by way of due diligence and inquiry to be carried out. And therefore, that will be very much part of our discussions with Tata going forward. John Pentland, followed by Chick Brodie. Cabinet Secretary, the First Minister is on record as saying that nothing is off the table and she would leave no stone unturned in her attempts to keep DL and Claybridge Steelworks open with options that include, as with Presswick, Presswick public ownership. Now, given that this is a possibility and one that, that I think must be given serious consideration, what is the Scottish Government doing to assess and prepare for such an outcome? Minister. Uh, well, I, I thank Mr Pentland for his, his uh, question and respect his own experience in the industry over his lifetime. Uh, and of course, we are considering all potential options. Uh, it is uh, accurate to say that our preferred option is to identify a buyer, a commercial operator, uh, and I think that patently would be the best possible option. Uh, all other options involving any element of public state support uh, immediately a risk uh, a difficulty with the state aid rules. But I do want to assure the Chamber, as the First Minister has confirmed, that all options will be considered, but the main focus of the task force will be looking to secure another private sector operator for both sites. Brody, followed by Siobhan McMahon. Thank you. <clears throat> While we appreciate the Government's considerable efforts uh, to do all the things mentioned in the statement, to find a buyer for the steelworks in DL and, and Clyde Bridge, can I ask that the Government engage with Tata and the workforce to consider, to consider an employee buyout to be exercised with a repayable loan from the government. My experience tells me that in those circumstances and with capital investment, productivity increases, costs reduce, even higher quality uh, results and new upmarket opportunities are defined. Uh, this can all be done very quickly. Minister. Uh, well, I can confirm that I've had uh, a frequent dialogue with, uh, with Tata, as have our senior officials uh, on a daily basis. And I had a discussion with John Bolton yesterday. John Bolton and Colin Timmins will be attending the task force for Tata on Thursday. Uh, all I would say to Mr Brodie is really the same as I said to Mr Pentland. Um, sadly, this is an extremely difficult time for the workers but it is relatively early days in the task that we have set ourselves. We need a bit of time in order to work with colleagues to explore all possible options. And at this stage, it would be premature and indeed foolish for any option to be ruled out. But plainly, we are, as we always are, determined to ensure the input from the workforce. After all, who knows how to do things better than the people who are actually doing the job? Siobhan McMahon, followed by Christina McKell. The Minister will be aware that Tata Steel have been increasing the capacity to build wind turbines at DL and Clybridge plants. Further to this, they have the potential to repurpose steel from decommissioned oil rigs. Currently, there are 11 million tonnes of scrap steel leaving Britain every year to be recycled in other parts of Europe. Any investment in these plants would help them compete in this market. Have these two areas of potential production been discussed with the task force? And will the government support any investment needed to make this happen? Minister. 
Well, the member is absolutely correct to say that, uh, that uh, 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 the construction of wind turbines is uh, an area in, in respect of which I understand Clyde Bridge has expressed uh, an interest, taken a close interest, as is shipbuilding. And in relation to that, I can confirm, of course, that we are looking to see what opportunities there are in respect of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the building of the two ferries by Ferguson's Marine uh, Engineering Limited. Uh, but, of course, we are looking at all potential options, and the task force will consider all potential sources of business. What we do need to do, however, is seek to identify, encourage, and provide whatever appropriate support is sought by any potential alternative operator. Uh, and uh, that is something that we shall do, informed by the sorts of issues that the member raises. Christina McKelvey, followed by Michael McMahon. Thank you, President Officer. Um, Minister, high energy costs are cited as one of the problems facing UKI operators. What has the Scottish Government done to help tackle the problem, and do they agree that the current UK Government regulation regarding energy pricing undermines not just the steel industry in Scotland, but all industry in Scotland? Minister. Um, well, there are two things in response to Christina McKelvey's question. Um, firstly, I think it was on the 4th of February when I visited uh, DL that I instructed that there should be a detailed energy analysis carried out. That has been carried out by Mabbitt and Associates. The purpose of that was to identify by what means the cost could be reduced. That report is completed. It is commercially confidential at the moment, at least. I hope it will be made public in the course of the work that the task force does. But I think it's reasonable to say that it identifies a number of opportunities to bring down the energy costs. That's why I instructed it back in February. Secondly, uh, as the member raises, the UK uh, uh, have uh, sought to bring in support for energy intensive industries. This has been debated for quite a long time. I discussed it with Anna Subri yesterday. We had a very productive and workmanlike conversation. Uh, I do believe that she personally is, uh, is doing absolutely all she personally can in order to bring forward the support from April to an earlier time. Uh, and she has undertaken to keep in regular contact with myself and my officials to secure that objective. That would make a solid contribution towards the capacity to be able to continue with the steel industry in Scotland and indeed the UK. Michael McMahon, followed by Mark McDonald. Thank you. Can I thank the Minister for his statement and, and also for the, the, the swift um, creation of the task force? And while it's absolutely right that this uh, critical um, phase of the, the situation that the task force is looking particularly at Clydesdale, uh, Clyde Bridge and uh, DL. Will the, the Minister uh, confirm that the wider steel manufacturing sector in, in Scotland needs to be considered by the task force, in particular the Clydesdale the Valarec plant, the Clydesdale uh, works at Moss End, which has undertaken two uh, rounds of redundancy in the past year, has been adversely affected by the downturn in the North Sea oil sector. Um, again, it's a, a plant which produces high-quality uh, Need products a question. And is the only heat uh, treatment plant in the, the whole of the United Kingdom. It also requires uh, to be considered in this wider picture so that it doesn't become a, a critical uh, consideration in the future. Minister. I, I do agree that the, that, that is, is relevant. It, it probably won't be the primary focus of the work of the task force to answer this question directly, but it is certainly related and relevant. And there are a large number of businesses, as uh, Michael McMahon well knows, involved in this sector in Scotland and south of the border. They are all anxious about the future of the industry in Britain. Uh, I and the Deputy First Minister know that from uh, discussions that we have had directly with some of these companies. So he's absolutely correct to raise this issue and that will form a part of our deliberations. Finally, Mark MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I welcome the Minister's confirmation that apprentices will be able to continue their qualifications. Can you advise whether the Scottish Government will look to put support in place at the end of those qualifications to support those apprentices into employment should they not be able to find uh, employment directly in the steel industry? Minister. Uh, yes, I'm happy to provide that confirmation. Thank you. That ends the ministerial statement. We now move on to the next item of business, which is a statement by Aileen McLeod on the Scottish Greenhouse Gas Emissions Annual Target Report 2030.